Welcome back. Our topic today is permutation versus combination. And this is a huge part of our probability unit, deciding what you're given. Is it the permutation or is it the combination? So let's go ahead and split our, our paper up here. Oops. We'll call one side permutation, and we'll try to list some facts about it, and we'll break it up and we'll call the other side combination. And we'll try to decide ways to help us recognize when to use the permutation versus the combination. So probably the most important thing is the order. In a permutation, the order matters. Now, what exactly do I mean by that? Well, for example, if I just told you to pick four people to be on your team, the order doesn't matter at all how you pick them. So that would not be a permutation. Something where the order matters. They're going to use terms like position or placement. Notice these are all P words for permutation. Position, placement. Um, they're going to be very specific is how I like to think of it. Okay, so these are, are key topics to help me think of permutation, position, placement, and them being very, very specific. Combination, the order doesn't matter. Like that first example I gave you where I said, just make a group or a team of five people or four people. You're just picking people and it doesn't matter the order at all, you pick them. So keywords to look for for combination is when you're just creating a random group or team or they like the word committee. When you're just putting together a whole team. Now the formula whoops, that we're going to use to represent these um, for permutation is going to be little n, like a subscript, PR, and N stands for the number you have to choose from. And R, so this R represents how many you're going to pick or choose. How many you will choose. Okay, so N is the number you have to choose from, and R is how many you want to choose. Now, likewise, in combination, that's going to be N, C, R. So the only difference, N still represents the number you have to choose from, R is still how many you want. The only difference, you're going to use P for permutation and C for combination. So let's go through a couple examples and just try to first determine if it's a permutation or combination. Okay, so before we do that, let's review one more time. Permutation, if they give you a position, they want you to place things in a certain order, or they're very, very specific. Combination is just creating any one group, team, committee. Okay, The order does not matter. Example 1. You need to choose two magazines from an assortment of 50. Combination or permutation? Well, was I specific about the two magazines you had to pick? Um, did I give you a position, a placement? I don't think so. You just have to pick any two that you want out of 50. So this is definitely a combination. The order does not matter. Now mathematically, how would I set that problem up? Well, how many do you have to choose from? 50. Combination. And how many do you want? Two. So I would just use 50C2 to get my answer. Example two. A club has 45 members, and four are to be chosen for a leadership committee. Permutation or combination? Well, all I have to do is pick four people to be on this committee. Notice that keyword committee. Okay, I'm not being specific. There's no position, no placement. So this is just grab four people out of the 45, and let's make a, a leadership committee. So I would definitely say combination. Order did not matter. So mathematically, I have 45 to choose from, and I'm only going to choose 4. So 45 combination 4. Example 3. A club has 45 members, and 4 members are to be chosen for president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. Are we thinking permutation or combination? 
Well, it's very similar to the previous problem. You had 45 people in your club, and you're picking four of them. However, this time, I would say I'm being very specific. I need specific jobs. I need not just four people to go onto a committee. I need a president, a vice president, a secretary, and treasurer. And think about this. Does the president of the United States and the vice president and the secretary and treasurer, do they have very different roles, or is it one big group together? Well, I would say they're very different, very specific jobs. So because that order is important, we're going to call this a permutation. Okay, so if you can distinguish between the different roles, that's your permutation. Um, position, placement, um, and I would set this one up as I have 45 to choose from and permutation 4. I'm going to choose 4 of them. But again, the second I start to get specific, giving specific roles out, that is a permutation. Number 4, the arrangement of your 9-digit social security number. Well, just ask yourself, is the order important or not important? Can you take those nine numbers and mix them up? Or is it important the way you write those nine numbers down? Is it specific? Well, I would say it's very specific. Therefore, this would be a permutation. Okay, I can't just write those nine numbers down any way I want. The order matters. So in this case, I would have nine numbers to choose from, and I would be using all nine. So nine permutation nine. My last quick example here between permutation and combination is one hopefully you'll, you'll appreciate after this. Your locker combination. Now, this one's kind of twisted. Think about this. They use the word combination in the problem. But now apply a little common sense. Does the order matter when you open your combination lock? Well, you're crazy if you don't think it does. If your combination is 5, 7, 10, you have to do them in that order, otherwise the, the lock won't open. So your combination locker is actually called a permutation. And somebody royally screwed up years ago. It's actually a permutation locker, or lock, not a combination lock. All right, so moving on just a little bit, now that you can hopefully tell between the permutation combination, and it's going to take practice, um, let's talk about how you evaluate these. Now, you don't need to do it by hand. Your calculator will do all the work for you. So let's say, for example, we said 10 combination 3. Well, on your calculator, there is a button for this. Um, the first thing you have to do, though, is you have to type in 10, and then you'll have to go back to that math button. Okay, you'll have to arrow over to probability, and in there you'll see um, right above that factorial, if you choose number 2, you'll see NPR, and if you choose number 3, you'll see NCR. And after you type the, that NCR in, you'll have to type in the number 3. So your screen should look like 10 NCR 3. And if you hit enter, you should get a total of 120. The permutation works the exact same way. You just have to make sure you type the first number in, then go get what you want, and then type the second number in. So let's continue and try uh, another one or two examples here. So in how many ways can three different vases be arranged on a tray? All right, so here's what I'm thinking. I first need to decide if I'm a permutation or combination. Does the order matter or does it not matter? Now remember those keywords I told you for permutation. Position, placement, specific. If you e arrange these vases, you're talking about the way you're placing them or the position of them. So this one is actually a permutation. Again, you're talking about the way you're going to place three va vases on this tray. So I'm going to say it's I have three to choose from. And in fact, I'm going to choose all three. So in my calculator, 3P3, and I should get a total of six. All right, there are 14 juniors and 23 seniors in Character Club. The club has to send four representatives to the state conference. Question A, in how many different ways are there to select a group of four students to attend the conference? So first of all, permutation or combination? you are just going to select four students. I'm not being specific. I didn't say I need a president, a vice president, treasurer, secretary. I just need you to pick any four students. So first and foremost, this is a combination. 
Now, remember, NCR, N is the total amount you have to choose from, and this is how many you're going to choose. Okay, so I think the R value is the easiest. How many are you going to choose? Well, let's uh, choose four. Now, what's the total amount that you're going to choose? Or, I'm sorry, the total amount that you have to choose from. Well, remember, you have 14 juniors and 23 seniors. So 14 juniors, 23 seniors. I would say I have 37 total students to choose from. So I would say 37 combination 4. And if I type that in, that gives me a total of 66,045 different ways to select 4 students. Question B. If the members of that character club are to send 2 seniors and 2 juniors, how many different groupings are possible? Okay, a couple big things we've got to take away from this one. I'm still picking two seniors, two juniors. I'm not being specific. I can pick any two seniors and any two juniors. So this is still a combination. Okay, remember, I'm not talking about position or placement. I'm just picking two of each. Now, the other thing I need you to do is I need you to circle this word and. Okay, and and's going to be a big deal in probability. When you see the word and, this is your trigger to make sure you know to multiply. Okay, and means to multiply. So I have to write two separate combinations and then multiply them together. So let me first write the one about the seniors. So I believe we had 23 seniors, so I have 23 seniors to choose from, and I want to choose two. And then I have one for juniors. I believe we had 14 juniors, and I want to choose two. And since I want the seniors and juniors, okay, that big word and means to multiply these two answers. Now you can type all of this in straight on one line, or you can do them separately. It doesn't matter. Um, I say, why the heck not? Just type it all in on one line. And I've got 23,023 different ways I can pick two seniors and two juniors. The baking club consists of 10 girls and 8 boys. So I've got 10 girls, 8 boys. Five members are needed for a bake-off. Question A, how many different ways are there to select a group of five? So permutation or combination is our first decision again. Are you just picking five or are you assigning them positions and placement? Well, I think you're just picking five people for the bake-off. So I would say combination. All right, so I know I need a combination and I know I'm picking five. Now remember, this is how many you have to choose from. How many different people do you have to choose from? Well, I would say you had 10 girls and eight boys. So I would say that's 18 different people to choose from which gets me 8,568 different combinations. Part B. If I wanted to send four girls and, there's that keyword again, one boy, how many different groupings are possible? All right, so since I'm sending girls and boys, I need two separate combinations. One for the girls, one for the boys. So if I wanted to send four girls, I'm choosing four, what's the total number of girls I have to send from? Hopefully you've said 10. And is that big multiplication. Okay. And if I want to send one boy, I'm picking one boy from a total of eight. And now carefully type it in. And I've got 1,680 different possible groupings. All right, our last question for the night is going to have a few parts to it, and it's the famous license plate question. Now, I'm sure you did this back in Algebra 1, and again, if you don't remember, that's okay, um, but we'll talk through it. License plates are made of three letters followed by two digits. And then we'll run through a couple of questions here. So question A, how many plates can be made if repetition is allowed? All right, so the first thing we better figure out is how many letters do you have to choose from? Well, hopefully you know that there are 26 letters in the alphabet. And how many digits do you have to choose from? Well, if you think of 1 through 9, that's 9 digits. But don't forget that 0 is also a digit. 
So there's actually 10 digits. Okay, so I've got letters and digits. So if you're allowed to repeat, I'm just going to draw some lines to represent these uh, sections. These three represent letters, and then I'm followed by two digits. And if I can repeat, well, I have 26 options for my first letter, and if I'm allowed to repeat, I have 26 for the next, 26 for the next. Digits, I have 10 digits to choose from, and if I can repeat, I've got 10 more digits. And then basically, remember, when these things are all next to each other, we're just simply going to multiply. And I've got 17 million, whoops, 1 million, 757,600. So let me tweak the question just a little bit. How many license plates are now possible if repetition... Where did my question go? Oh boy. How many license plates are possible if repetition is now not allowed? Okay, so same deal. I think we had three letters followed by two digits. Now remember, you just can't repeat. So if you have 26 options for the first letter, and you use one of the 26, I don't know what letter it is, but you used one, that means you have your remaining 25 to choose from. Okay, so now picture this. You've used two, and now you would have 24 to choose from. Same idea with the digits. If I have 10 digits for the first option, and I use one, I now have nine left. And all I'm going to do is multiply to get that final answer. Okay, now I'm going to try to make you think here. If the first letter must be the letter A, and the last digit must be a 2, how many plates are possible? So let's go ahead and... Shoot, where'd it go again? Let's go ahead and do the exact same thing. We'll draw out our letters and digit lines and think about this. I know this, this letter has to be an A. Therefore, if it has to be an A, how many options do you have to go here? Well, if it has to be an A, you only have one possible choice to put there, and that's the letter A. Now, be careful on your next one. You've used one letter. And let's say we can not repeat. That would be critical. Let's say we can not repeat, and I've already used an A. I now have 25 possible choices. And then I would have 24, since I cannot repeat. Okay, so again, I put a 1 here because I only have one option. It has to be the letter A. Now, in digit-wise, they said the last digit has to be the number 2. So I only have one option to put there. Now, if that last digit's a 2, that means I've already used a number, and since I can't repeat, I only have nine options for this first number. And again, I'm just going to multiply to get my total amount. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think that does it for us. Have a great night, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow.